Hello everybody, Thanny here again. Uh, I'm going to be doing my first video outside of the main introduction to Dwarf Fortress, showing you how to basically start it up. Uh, once you've downloaded the Lazy Noob Pack, which I did put in a link uh, down below in my last video, uh, you will see this once you've extracted the uh, contents. Uh, but basically the first thing you want to look at in this to get into the game is double click Lazy Noob Pack. This is basically a uh, UI in which you can change certain things in the game. You can change a tile set. You can uh, change how to run utilities, turn sound off, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, a lot of different things. But basically, you don't need to worry about this as a, as a new user. This is more for advanced users. Uh, but one important thing, if you want to play like how I do, I highly recommend you install the Phoebus tile set, uh, which is basically what I use to make it look as nice as it does. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is double uh, click Phoebus and then click install graphics. And then yes, 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 and then that will be everything fine. That will install Phoebus in your game. Uh, obviously, there are different tile sets that, you, if you want to, you can play with them. Uh, but I'm using Phoebus, and if you're watching this tutorial, you'll probably be wanting to use the same tile set as me, as it will help a lot. And from there, you just need to go into Dwarf Fortress. You can close that uh, video. You can close that. that I just closed as well. Uh, you just need to go into Dwarf Fortress, and then double click Dwarf Fortress to exit. This will bring up this window. This is the main menu of Dwarf Forest. I'm just going to run over what each of these uh, buttons does. Create new world uh, is basically a very basic, uh, a basic create creation of a new world with very few options in it. Uh, basically, for anybody that doesn't want to mess around with uh, the customization of uh, generating a world, even I use this. I've never really bothered to advance uh, to make a world of advanced parameters uh, because you know it's quite fun. You can do stuff like you can add loads of volcanoes. You can make the entire world of glacier. You can add loads of monsters, that kind of thing. Uh, but I personally prefer to stick with the basics. Uh, there's the object testing arena, which is an arena in which you can test. Uh, you can test monsters, you can test dwarves, you can test items, all that kind of thing. About Dwarf Forest is basically the credits of Dwarf Forest, which you can check. But the first thing you want to do if you're following this tutorial is go for create new world. Uh, this will bring up a create a new world menu in which there's a few different options. Not a huge amount, but I've run over what each uh, option is. Uh, basically, world size, first of all, is the, uh, as you can see here, there's the size of the world map. This changes. Uh, depending on how big your map is, it will be more CPU intensive. Uh, I generally go for large though, just so I really enjoy world, large worlds. History is how long the world runs for. Uh, as I said in Dwarf Fortress, it runs, uh, it runs the world, it generates law for you. Uh, monsters, civilizations, interact, that kind of thing. Uh, and this can go all the way to uh, 1050 years. Or you can make it 5 years if you want to. I personally like to stick with short. Uh, I don't know why. Number of civilizations is the number of distinct races slash cultures there are, as it says. Uh, this basically means like dwarf, how many different dwarf uh, civilizations, how many humans, kobolds, goblins, all that kind of stuff. Obviously there'll be new kind of civilizations added into the game. As totally develops, because as I have said numerous times, it's only a third done, so that's good. Uh, I'll generally leave that medium. Number of sites. I'm actually not really sure what that means. I think it means like stuff like a uh, like different towers, castles, that kind of thing. Uh, I'll generally leave that in a medium. Number of beasts. Uh, this makes beasts more prevalent, as it says. Uh, I generally set this this to very high, but seeing as I'm going to be doing a tutorial, I'm going to leave it on medium. You can do whatever you want, really, uh, but medium is good. If you uh, on as if you're a bit scared of being killed, I'd recommend doing medium or even very low. And natural savagery. Uh, in the game, there's something called savagery of a of a biome. Not only is there stuff like temperature, temperature and uh, temperature and and uh, the general surroundings. Like you know, you can have a woodland, you can have a glacier, you can have a desert, that kind of thing. Uh, it's also hot, cold. Like I said, temperature. Uh, but there's also something called savagery, which basically. Uh, is how evil an area is. Somewhere it can be good, it can be neutral, it can be evil. Uh, I generally enjoy to put this on very high and embark in evil areas, but evil areas are very hard. Uh, evil areas are pretty obvious. The, it says surroundings and then it will say something like uh, terrifying, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, sav savagery can be modified obviously. And that can make your game harder or easier depending on how you set it. Uh, mineral occurrence is how frequent minerals are in your world. Uh, you can leave that whatever you want, uh, but everywhere will make it a lot easier. 
again have the minerals but for now i'm just going to leave it sparse uh, and then once you're done with this you're going to press y to generate your first world uh, and this will go through a process of gem generating a world generating a name generating the law which is why it may take a short while to do and it's very taxing on the computer. I don't think I've mentioned before, but Dwarf Fortress, while it does have uh, very simple graphics, is very taxing on the computer. Not so much in the graphics card area, because obviously it doesn't have 3D graphics, uh, but the CPU, it's very CPU intensive. Uh, but even with a fairly low end uh, CPU, you can still get by pretty easily. It's, it's not a hugely taxing game, but you may have to limit your population. As you can see right now, it's doing several things in the generation of my world, placing other beasts and placing civilizations. And here goes my years. It's only going to go up to 125 because I set it short. But as you can see, these are historical figures. It's generating people who live, die, do things, modify the world, advanced dwarf kind, uh, and other different events, which is basically uh, historical figures doing things. Uh, but yeah, once, once your world's generated, it'll come up like this. You can go through it, you can check, uh, there's loads of uh, different places, all these places have different generated names. Uh, yeah, and then you can basically just look over your world, see what you like. Uh, and use the arrow keys to do this, and one thing that you need to know, well actually I'll get in that later. Uh, but yeah, once you've done this, if you're not happy with the world, you can abort it. Uh, you can also export an image slash info, which basically gives you a big nice picture of the world, which I think makes for a really nice... Uh, a really nice uh, view of the world it still looks quite impressive uh, if it's explored as a big picture but with your original world there probably won't be any issues with it and you can embark on it uh, I am actually in fact gonna be uploading this world uh, and it will be in the description below if you want to play along with me and embark in exactly the same place as me uh, but yeah once you've done that you can create another world or you can choose which is what I'm gonna choose to start playing uh, this is the world that where that I just generated before and start playing uh, so there's three different types of game modes the main one is Dwarf Fortress obviously uh, that's the name of the game Dwarf Fortress but there is Adventurer and Legends which you can opt to play uh, I'll just describe all of them as I said Dwarf Fortress is where you embark with seven dwarves and you have to face off beasts uh, and you act more of a manager than uh, you don't you don't have such a huge role in uh, in in it's not like Minecraft where you know individually uh, control something and uh, change the world like that. Uh, but yeah, adventurer is quite a lot like well, yeah, it's quite a lot like uh, something called a roguelike, uh, which is basically called a roguelike because it was a game called Rogue, and then loads of people made games like Rogue, so it's called a roguelike. I know it's really really cool. Uh, but yeah, the adventurer mode is basically where you control one person. You can uh, you can recruit people into a party. Uh, well, one person being a dwarf, an elf, whatever. You can modify the game so you can be whatever you want. You could probably play as a goblin. Uh, but yeah, I tend not to dabble a whole lot in adventurer. It's not as it doesn't have as much focus as dwarf forest. But it is one thing pretty cool that you can do as an adventurer, which I quite enjoy doing. Is uh, as an adventurer, you can return to your old forest after it's been a. Uh, after it's been uh, destroyed, uh, you can you can go look for your forest. You can get the treasures so that when your forest, you can get killed by whatever killed your forest. That kind of thing. Uh, and the legends mode is something quite impressive. Uh, it's it's basically the law of the game. As I said, it generates a lot of law. Uh, and this is basically the bit the big compilation of uh, all of the law of the world. You can look at beasts, people, blah 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 blah, and uh, your dwarf fortress uh, will it, it modify the legends. You do have an impact in the world, uh, as well as adventurer also modifies the world. You know, you could kill some, you could kill an important historical figure, and that would be modified in legends. Uh, they would be noted as being killed by the brave dwarf and adventurer and legends. Uh, but yeah, if you're gonna be fond of the tutorial, obviously dwarf fortress is where you want to be. Uh, but as soon as you click Dwarf Forest with Enter, this is the view that we that you'll have. I'll just go over quickly what everything is. It is a bit uh, overwhelming at first, but it's something you quickly get used to and it all looks natural. Uh, but first of all, this is a big world map. This is a smaller map and this is an even smaller map. Uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to explain. Uh, but yeah, big map, smaller map, smaller map. Uh, you can, you know... This is basically choosing an area uh, to embark into. Uh, 
and you'll embark within, within that square. Uh, but basically, this this bit on the right is basically describing what kind of place it is. It's temperate. This place in particular is a temperate shrubland. Uh, its temperature is temperate, which basically means you know not hot not cold that's quite good uh trees woodland which means there'll be a lot of trees other vegetation which is basically plants which you can harvest uh is moderate surroundings is wilderness wilderness is a, uh, I believe it's uh it's not pure neutral it's good neutral uh it's quite a good place to embark in summer which is a uh, wilderness it's not something very dangerous stream this basically tells you the name of uh the stream in which uh we would be embarking into uh which is the whips of starvation as i said you know lots of names are generated very interesting names uh, and this basically tells you what's in the place uh, as you can see it has a layer of shallow clay very deep soil which is both very good things to embark into aquifer uh, uh, is something quite hard to deal with uh, aquifer is basically a big layer of water uh, there's a lot of tutorials in uh, uh, that t detail on how to deal with an aquifer uh, but I don't really want to deal with an aquifer in this tutorial. Uh, it's something I'll reserve for another time. So I will find something about an aquifer, such as here. Okay, I'm gonna embark here. Uh, but basically, as you can see on this far on this far left screen, this basically allows you see this is a tile. This is the tile that I'm moving with, and you know I can I can move uh, using the arrows. But you use H, U, K, and M to move around in this place, and this basically allows you to move where you perfectly where you want to embark you can increase the embark size but gen uh, by default it's four by four that you embark into uh this choose uh, decides the the size of the place that you want to embark into when you get there uh but with this i'm just gonna go over it clear like i said that's good it allows for farming very easily deep soils very good there isn't any uh rocks but that uh I mean, it, it, there's no metals, but there is flux. Flux uh, is basically something that you use uh, to remove impurities and something. Uh, in this case, it can be used uh, to make steel. You'd make iron, you need iron, which then you get pig iron, and then with iron and pig iron, you can make steel. Uh, one thing that's quite interesting is the fact that a lot of the stones in the game are, are actually real stones. A lot of the things in the game are quite real. Uh, obviously, it's still a fantasy game, but I like how it uh, it does have a lot of uh, realistic kind of things in it. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna embark here. Uh, it's called the Rhyming Steps, and the brook that we're gonna be embarking on. Oh, by the way, the difference between a brook and a river is that you can walk over a brook. Uh, a river, you cannot. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I recommend a brook over a river. Rivers do serve as a natural uh, kind of defensive point, which is hugely useful. Uh, but a brook, a brook is a lot, just a lot more accessible. I personally recommend a brook. Uh, but yeah, if you download the same video that, uh, the same world that I'm going to be putting in the in the description below, uh, you can play along with here. Obviously, you just need to come here, there, and then move over here. Uh, but yeah, to embark, you're just going to need to press E, and then ask if you're sure you want to embark here, and you're going to press Enter because you do want to. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm starting to get to 13 minutes, so I'm going to cut this video short, and I'm going to do another video on how to prepare for the journey. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.